Hey everybody, it's Cam here. Uh, I have recently been involved in several discussions with people who said that they will not start reading a new book series until the final book in the series is completed. That's obviously not an issue I have. I talked repeatedly about how oftentimes I will just move from series to series, only reading books one or two, just because I love the world building. That's what uh, you know gives me that reading high, is reading a new series for the first time. So uh, if, over the course of uh, the last 10 years, um, there's been a lot of times when I haven't read full series, but this year I tried to make a concerted effort that I was going to read um, second, third, fourth books of any book that I found as a uh, five out of five or a hard 10. Um, so in this case, this year, I actually read four series that completed a book. Um, in some cases, for a couple of them, I read all four books just this year. Uh, and for two other series, I read the final book in the series this year. Uh, I'm also going to throw out a bonus fifth series that I actually finished last year before uh, I started the, the YouTube channel or before I brought back the podcast. And it was a series that I really, really enjoyed uh, that I read the first couple of books a, a few years back. And then I finally read the last one uh, last fall. But uh, So I will talk about all five series that um, I have recently completed. Uh, we're going to start off with number one uh, being Soul's Harvest series by M.D. Presley. This is a, a gas lamp fantasy that um, is an analog to the American Civil War. Uh, we, each of the four books uh, has a different point of view character, and the story is told in a split method of the, the current time period that serves as like the storyline and a, a past uh, time period that serves as like the world building for the book. Um, each of the four characters um, are uh, enjoyable. I would say definitely the first three um, I cared about more because the fourth book is kind of like a bigger, wider, series-wide thing. But we have uh, a world that um, uses a really cool magic system where everybody has uh, three breaths, uh, animals have two breaths, uh, plants only one, and people who can use magic actually have a fourth breath that can be either in your mind and let you do, like manipulate people's uh, thoughts or convince them to do things. Uh, you have your body, you can turn yourself into uh, like more powerful version of yourself, like make swords, things like that. Uh, and then you have your spirit uh, that allows you to actually uh, take other people's spirits potentially or uh, unaligned uh, breaths as they're called. Um, the other style is to uh, make things that are useful uh, for people in that. So we ended up having a world that was a lot like the American South and the American North uh, prior to the Civil War. There's a big Civil War that happens before the book starts and that's the past time that we're being told about. And then we have a, a current time where uh, a woman named Martha Childress is trying to take an, a child who she's been tasked to uh, get to her father. Um, she's trying to get them there while some of the other characters are trying to stop that. Um, I'm not going to go too much farther into the story right there, but just know, super cool magic system if you have interest in the American Civil War. This has some a really cool uh, provocative uh, role on that where uh, the... The war is basically fought over people who think that breaths need to always be let free if they're not, you know, currently actively in something living and those who don't see a problem with it. So the slaves in this case are uh, just breaths that have no free will or no, uh, you know, thoughts of their own. So I, th I felt like it was just a really cool story. I really loved the world building. And um, I think that for me, maybe even book three was my favorite one in this because um, the, the character that we get to see and, and, and inhabit in for book three uh, is one that in the first two books I really hated. And it was fun being able to see, you know, why he is the way he is. The second series that I want to talk about is Empire of Ruin by David Green. Uh, I read all four books in that series this year. It's a true epic fantasy. We have the whole like existential crisis to the entire world. Um, you end up having a kingdom. It's not a very good kingdom in terms of like they're genocidal, um, they're jerks. They are trying to wipe out the elves that are on the, uh, the continent and they're really close to managing to pull that off when suddenly an old threat uh, that we get to see only at first in the prologue, uh, they're called the first people. They're kind of like a mix between humans and elves. They use a different kind of magic from the humans and um, they reappear after uh, several thousand years 
and suddenly we have a real fight. Uh, I really liked a lot of the characters in this, um, Kayleen especially. Um, she is what is called a sparker. She can use that magic that the humans and uh, now that the elves use as well. And um, she has done her duty and fought the elves for a long time, but she doesn't uh, actually believe that, that they should right, wipe out the elves. And uh, then um, her mother actually happens to be in the first group that fights those first people. Uh, the book is just a really, it's really fun. It's true epic fantasy. Uh, if you are someone who likes The Wheel of Time, David Green is a big fan of the series as well. So there's a bunch of Easter eggs in there. Uh, my favorite one happens to be when Kayleen is with a party and they go to an inn. This, the innkeeper is really skinny and he's a huge jerk. And she utters the line, you can never trust a skinny innkeeper, which is like, you know, the Matt's whole thing for the entire Wheel of Time series. I, I got a real kick out of that. Uh, in some ways, the magic system kind of reminds me of that, too, the way that the humans use their magic. But it's not derivative. It's, it's definitely its own thing. I thought the world building was done just really exceptional, uh, despite the fact that there's lots of battles being fought and, um, and people moving around. The map is really easy to follow. That can be something that, that bugs me in, like, say, military campaigns in books, is that sometimes I'll have trouble figuring out where people are going. But I felt like you had your central like place, you have you know a place in the north, place in the south, and it just seemed like it was really easy to follow where people were going. I really liked the writing. Uh, this is a book that, um, that I, I started reading. It was about the 10th book that I had read this year when I started reading new books. And it was one that helped me re-remember how uh, I used to do my rating system of where I would do, I get, on Goodreads and Amazons, I give a lot of like five stars for books that, that say they were a nine out of 10 for me. But this is what reminded me of my, I have my five plus, right? My true 10 out of 10 books. Um, and this was the first one of those that I read this year. And it just, I really enjoyed it. And I, I had a great time uh, reading all four books in the series. Read them all this year and uh, I really enjoyed it. Okay, the third series that I finished up this year is an urban fantasy series called the Menic Thorn series. Uh, that is by Patrick Samfire. Uh, this series follows a, a single point of view character for all four books. Um, his name was Menic Thorn. Uh, this is an urban fantasy series, secondary world, basically Renaissance era technology, uh, as far as how the world is. You have one single city, which is, you know, one of the, the more common ways to do urban fantasies. Uh, this city is like the most important city in the world in some ways because of where it's situated. Uh, the gods are very, very real. Most of them are dead at this point, actually. Uh, and one of the things is, is that, that mages get their magic from like the decomposing essence of dead gods. So that was kind of a, a funny, uh, you know, element in there. Uh, everyone uses magic in different ways. Menic Thorn uh, actually sees magic as colors. So he's able to manipulate it that way in order to, to actually use his magic. Uh, he's funny in particular because he is a very middling mage. He's not super weak, but he is nowhere near the most powerful mage. But he's a freelance mage in a world where no one else is basically a freelance mage. There are three high mages in the city, and those three have uh, are basically the patrons for all other mages. And um, so Manic being on his own, he does a lot of you know, kind of crap jobs that just the average person wants him to do, like see whether a spouse is cheating, and maybe exercise a ghost or something like that. Uh, he gets beat up a lot. Uh, he get, ends up uh, having to use his wits and um, little tricks here and there to end up facing off with things that are way more powerful than he is. The books are, are enjoyable. I laughed out loud a lot, but they still do have uh, a little bit of heart and meaning, uh, you know, be, between behind them. Um, Menic Thorn wants to help out uh, the poor and things like that, right? And, uh, you know, we get to see all the inequality that, that takes place even today, but was probably, you know, really bad back in a Renaissance era type of a si situation. Uh, really enjoyed all four of those books. Um, four of the five series I'm going to talk about are four book series, only one trilogy. Uh, so all of them, that's another thing I think uh, a positive for all of these is that it's uh, not going to require, you know, 12 books to, to finish any of these series off. Uh, the fourth series that I want to talk about that I finished off actually just uh, a week ago while on vacation, I read all three books. Uh, I had read the first one, Plague of Giants, already, but it is the Seven Kenning series by Kevin Hearn. 
This one is another true epic fantasy. Maybe one of my favorite magic systems of any series ever. I think the second book in this series might be my favorite second book in any series ever. It just To me, it's just perfect. Um, the magic system is really cool. Uh, a kenning, in this case, is a type of magic. Uh, seven kennings, you might... Uh, get where this is going. But for when the series starts, we only have five kennings. Uh, and so each of the five uh, countries ha that has their own very unique kenning uh, are uh, shaped very differently because of that. So one of the, the people have a water kenning. They can do a bunch of water-based magic, including um, you know killing people by pulling their blood out of their body or uh, you know curing impurities for example well all their cities are going to be coastal cities or river cities because water plays such a huge role um, there's ones that, that use uh, stone as their canning and they're going to build all their cities out of stone they can build roads they can do all kinds of cool things with that magic right one country doesn't have a canning and these basically monstrous creatures uh, make it uh, unsafe to leave the city walls a lot of the time. So that even that, not having a magic system shapes them. Uh, one of the coolest things about this is that the magic, in order to get magic, you have to basically be willing to commit suicide. Uh, for those water people, for example, they have to jump, jump into a big water flume and swim in an underwater cave out through the other side. Well, the thing is, is that uh, it's too far to swim without drowning, unless you're blessed by the god, and get a uh, get your kenning right so this case that's like a 50 50. Uh, they range uh, the success rate for the different kennings ranges from as high as 60 percent to as low as 12 percent so there's a good chance you're going to die uh, trying to get your magical ability and then using your magic can potentially aid you or it has other uh, um, things that are um, that are definite detriments to you, right? Just a really cool magic system, really cool world building. I love the whole way the story's done. Now, my bonus uh, one is one that I actually finished in 2022, but like I said, I wasn't doing episodes at that time. And that is The War for the Rose Throne by Peter McLean. This is another uh, urban fantasy, also set in about Renaissance era tech. Very low magic though, and this is a definite grimdark series. Uh, you have a man named Thomas Piety. Uh, right before the series starts, he has been a conscript um, and he has been fighting a war for uh, his queen. Well, he goes back to the city that he's from um, and he had been a gangster before he was conscripted and taken uh, to the army. Uh, he comes back to his city with uh, a bunch of seasoned veterans, uh, it's stone cold killers, all of them and he spends a bunch of the book trying to get his territory back from what actually ends up being foreigners that uh, had taken over the territory in the city but while he was gone. Uh, we're talking uh, some true grimdark, lots of people die. Thomas Piety is the main character. He is definitely not a good guy. He is not a true hero. He's a definite anti-hero, uh, but he is our, uh, you know, our focal point. I also uh, ended up listening to a couple of these books. I'd already read three of the four, but I listened to the final two again on audiobook, and I really liked the audiobook narrator as well, so um, that's definitely a possibility. Um, really liked just the, the grittiness, um, all of the characters they've been uh, dealing with. Uh, they're dealing with PTSD from, from the war, um, probably also from just the way they, they grew up to uh, all these characters, especially Thomas Piety and his crew. Uh, they were, uh, you know, grew up poor. They were gangsters before the war even. So it's just one of those things that um, this definitely doesn't glorify violence. It doesn't um, m uh, make, you know, war seem like a, a heroic action. Um, all of the people are broken because of it. And it was just a, a truly well-written um, series. All the books are fairly short, too, three to 400 pages long. And just all around, I just loved the series. It's definitely one that I'll probably go back and reread at some point. So that's five series for you if you are uh, someone that wants to have a finished series before you start. Thank you.